Hello, learners. My name is Remy. I don't think we met yet, did we? Well, pleasure to meet you. Oh, I see. You may be wondering what I'm doing here today apart from exercising. Well, I'm one of your own personal tutors from Fun, Science and Math. And today, we're going to be talking about motion, or kinematics to be more precise, which is what I'm doing now, moving. We see people and objects moving around us all the time, but we hardly pay any attention to it. And the funny thing is that we don't even realize when we're moving ourselves. That was a nice jog. But what is motion? Did you ever ask yourself that question? Now, look at me. What am I? Am I moving or am I stationary? I bet you would be putting money on the second option, but I'm telling you, you would be wrong. Because as we speak, the Earth is spinning on its own axis at 1,600 kilometers per hour. Plus, the Earth is moving around the Sun at the speed of 110,000 kilometers per hour. Wow, that's really fast. But how come we don't feel anything? Well, that's because we're all moving along with the Earth at the same constant speed. Think about it. When you're in a car or flying on a plane, as long as the ride is going smoothly, you can almost convince yourself that you're not moving. Because our planet is so big, 1,600 kilometers per hour feels like nothing. Incredible, isn't it? Imagine moving at that same speed while riding a merry-go-round. I bet you wouldn't last a minute on your seat. Welcome back learners to our beautiful studio. Last time we met, I was running up and down the beach and we were talking about motion, remember? But also how difficult it is to accept the fact that our planet is moving, but we don't feel anything. And the reason why is because our planet, which is 5 billion years old, has never changed its speed, not even for a second. This is one of the fundamental laws of physics, that if you move at a constant speed, you're not aware of that movement. It's almost as if reality doesn't exist, but only point of views. Because if a person were to be looking at me from outer space, he or she would first see the planet spinning on its own axis going around the sun, and me, this tiny human, running on top of it. I guess Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds of our time, could spend hours talking about his theory of relativity. But today, for the sake of this episode, we're going to talk about something a bit more simple, the motion diagram, which, which is something that's needed to visualize the motion of objects in the entire universe. Now let's explain the motion diagram. While I was running at Ella Beach, let's say a camera was taking a photo of me at each second. This would be the first photo of myself running. This would be the second. This would be the third. This would be the fourth. And this would be the fifth. From this, we're able to get your distance, with x being your distance to positive. Then you have 0 meters, 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, and 40 meters. From this, you're going to get your time, T. Let's say I've ran this whole distance in 4 seconds. 0 seconds, 10 meters took me 1 second. 20 meters took me 2 seconds, 
30 meters took me three seconds and 40 meters took me four seconds. Bit faster than Toya Whistle. But we can go with that. From this, we're able to get your motion graph. With X being your distance, as we explained, and T being time. Then you have zero, 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, and 40 meters. And a second that took us to run. So 10 meters being one second, 20 meters being two seconds, 30 meters being three seconds, and 40 meters being four seconds. From this, we learn three things. One, position. which was the distance and the time it took me to run. Two, velocity, which is 10 meters per second. And three, acceleration, which is zero, because I was running at a constant speed. So, you may be wondering why it's so important to understand the motion diagram. Well, because it enables us to track the motion of objects in the entire universe, not just me running on the beach. Take, for example, an asteroid, these big threatening looking rocks that may come into collision with our Earth at any time. Well, even though scientists have much more sophisticated instruments than our calculation on the magic glass, just by monitoring distance and time, they'd be able to tell us if these gigantic rocks would bump into our planet at any time. Interesting, isn't it? That's the power of physics. It can explain just about anything around us. And sometimes all it takes is just a simple formula, just like the one we learned today.